Hi guys, you're listening and watching Out of the Box Podcast with Rosie Tran. I am so excited to have a very special guest today. He's an improv teacher, comedian. He used to have his own improv school in New Orleans, an entrepreneur, and now he's teaching improv and mindfulness and uh, mindfulness through comedy. My good friend, Chris True. Chris, how are you? Hey, I am so happy to be here. Thank you, Rosie. Hi, everyone. This is, this is fun. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I'm so excited. I love seeing all your posts and how you're using comedy and mindfulness. Um, I'm actually a big um, self-help junkie. So I totally get all your posts when you're like, okay, comedians, get your you know shit together. I'm like, I'm one of those comedians that's trying to get my shit together. <laughs> <laughs> so improv and mindfulness seem like they go hand in hand because improv is all about being in the moment. But I haven't really seen that much of that aspect of it being taught. So I'm really interested to see how you took that leap from just improv and comedy to focusing on mindfulness and self-help and all these amazing things that are gonna help people not just get a laugh, but you know, be joyful and abundant inside. Yeah, well, it, for me, it started, you know, when you get into something like improv, you 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 pick up on all these things. I'm not the first person to to say you know like that these things make you a more mindful person or that the more you do improv, the more in the moment you'll be. But what I did discover is that is that there wasn't a lot of people who were focusing heavily on that. It was all it was always treated like a side effect, like and oh yeah, this will happen too. And I love the art of improv so much and I'm just such a big comedy person that for me it was a very natural fit to, to smush them all together and I say smush it wasn't even I mean it didn't need to be forced it was like very it was a very elegant pairing all these things I just it, you know and I always say I always find myself um, to be like a fish out of water in comedy circles you know it's because a lot of people as you just said you know a lot of comedians you know when the show's over they're talking about you know, what bars are we going to go hit next? Or like, you know, what- Let's do what, cocaine in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I was going to say what mischief, but yes, mischief <laughs> equals cocaine in the bathroom. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, and, and, and I was, you know, not that I'm opposed to like going out and partying every now and then, but I was just like, man, none of my comedian friends are talking about, about books and the, the podcasts they listen to are just straight comedy podcasts as opposed to podcasts that maybe- teach you something or, you know, shine a different light, another aspect of your world and whatever. So I was just like, what happens if I focus on all this? It felt very organic and natural to me. And so that's what I've been doing for the past couple of years. I think that's amazing. Comedians do tend to be intellectual. So I am surprised um, that more comedians don't go down that path. I think there is unfortunately a little bit of a self-destructive nature with comedy. A lot of people, you know, um, think about, you know, telling jokes into the odd hours and drinking whiskey. And I think the writing community also has it a lot where writers feel very dark and moody. And I don't think that's necessarily true of writing. But um, before we go on, this is not a mindfulness podcast. This is an out of the box podcast, so out of the box thinkers, um, progressive thinkers. And so some of our listeners might not know what mindfulness is. So why don't you get into the basics for some people who are listening and watching are like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I talk about mindfulness, I, I, I think it's, it's more about being endlessly curious about, about your universe and the environment that you build around you and, and how you go, how you move about the world. You know, I think mindfulness can mean different things to different people. I'm, I am certainly not like the best meditator, nor have I ever even considered teaching any sort of straight mindfulness workshops. Like that's, that's out of my skill set. But to me, mindfulness is just, is, it's like being curious about your, your world. How can you be the best possible version of yourself? And it is always learning, always being, I keep saying curious, but I think it's like, that's a big part of it for me. Just being curious about how you can be the, your, your best self. So when I say mindfulness, that's what I mean. And that's why it's a nice fit with the, um, with learning improv and figuring out how these improv techniques can infiltrate your life and your communication techniques, your communication habits. Yeah, I think that's really important because a lot of people are living on type of a rat race mentality where they're not being mindful to um, not just their own lives, but how what they're doing interacts with other people. So I think that's really, really important to see how your actions you know, um, can impact others, how your actions can impact your own life and looking within. It sounds like what you're... In, asking people to question is kind of question, you know, be in the question, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Just be curious. Be curious about these things and and figure out what your speed of learning about them is. You know, some people are going to, you know, you, 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 you talk to them about mindfulness and then you're like, yeah, you should try meditating. And then they're like, I don't like sitting still for 10 minutes. All I do is sit still and think. And it's like, okay, well then that doesn't mean mindfulness isn't for you. It just means that maybe that it just means maybe meditating is not for you. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, the, it's, it's, it's funny because that, that actually has a lot in common with improv, especially in comedy circles. You know, people go see one bad improv show. Oh, and like, yeah. And they're like, like oh, man, right? improv sucks. <laughs> it's like, you know what? A lot of improv, a lot of improv does suck. Also, a lot of stand up can suck, too. It's yeah. like a lot of music can suck. It's like you don't listen to one bad song on a radio and you're like, music's not for me. But people do that all the time with improv. People do it all the time with mindfulness. And it's just, it, it's, it's a fun, it, it's, it's a fun puzzle to, to try and uh, solve, a fun code to try and crack. That's such a good point that you make. And I think that's really important with comedy is that comedy tends to be lumped into one thing, comedy, right? Improv, stand up, whatever comedy. But if you think about it, um, comedy is more like music. There's country, there's metal, there's pop music, there's rap, right? So there's different types of comedy. There's improv comedy, there's stand up, there's prop comedy, there's, you know, all sorts of different, there's dry comedy, satire, whatever. And so you don't go to a heavy metal show if you're like a rap fan and go, oh my God, this sucks. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. So I think you're making a really, really good point is that there's so many different types of comedy and mindfulness that some people, you know, like you said, they go to a bad show and they get like comedy or mindfulness PTSD, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and speaking of being curious, I mean, isn't it also true that some of the best musicians, to take that as an example, they are curious about other art form, other forms of music, and then they other blend styles, in, yeah. they blend into their style. So I don't have a great example right now, but like whoever your favorite like pop artist is probably was influenced by by some rapper or maybe even by a country singer, whatever. And it's like the people who are curious about that, I think are the most interesting, unique people because they truly are blending things on their terms and their universe because they're being curious. So I think these musicians who do that are, are you know, they, they stand out. And I think comedians who do that also stand out. Yeah, so let's talk about mindfulness and creativity because I think that what you're talking about does apply to improv and stand up, but it can also apply to other forms of creativity. Yeah, for sure. So whether it's you know whether it's writing or if it's even if it's something that doesn't really have an end game, I think people like us maybe when I think about creativity, I'm always thinking about okay, well, what am I making? What is the what thing can I create? I'm making? Yeah. What can I create? <laughs> is this going to be a podcast, a YouTube video? Is this going to be an album? But I think creativity for a lot of people is just is is just doing the thing without necessarily obsessing over what the end product is or like adding it to your website of like here are my <laughs> things you can buy you know um so yeah I think it's I, I think it's such a broad topic that is so yeah, it's so, so interesting and again yeah, I'm I'm still so curious about it. you know this has like been the world that I've been swimming in for a while now it's I'm so curious about how other people in, inject mindfulness into their creativity and what um and what they consider to be creative yeah, and you're going around right now. You're actually traveling the country teaching your seminars and workshops on mindfulness. Is that right? Yeah, so something strange has happened. Um, the, you know, for a long time when I was teaching improv, the, you know, teaching it in like a, you know, a small indie comedy theater, like the, the, the thing that, was all, that people like me would always be cautious of doing is pursuing like the big corporate clients, right? It's like, but really... Those are things that paid the most money, you know, when a big, it's like, like, I love teaching improv to a bunch of broke college students who, like, are, <laughs> who are dreaming, who are dreaming about like being a famous comedian. Like I get a lot out of that personally. I really, and I am really good at it. I really enjoy that. But, but that would always make you feel self-conscious about when like Whole Foods would ask you to come do a team building event because they're not in it for the comedy. They're in it for the <laughs> They're in it for like, you know, for the, um, for the communication hacks and they just want to have a fun afternoon. So there was always this push and pull mentality where it's like, oh, I want that Whole Foods gig because it's going to pay my rent for a few months. But I also feel like that that's not really me. Um, but, what I've, but what I've done the past couple of years has been like, how do I make that? How do I get just as excited about that? How do I make that also me? How do I blend all these worlds together? And so, um, and, 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 when I changed my own mindset about that, that's 
those gigs have happened a lot more frequently and I've learned to do them on my terms. I guess I think that's the important thing. I want to do them on my terms where I don't feel like, you know, I'm not suit and tie in showing up at the corporate function and like, and not being true to who I am. I'm still me. I'm still teaching them comedy techniques. I'm still teaching them how it can work in their, um, you know, on their terms. But, but yeah, so, so the past couple of years, it's like, that has almost, um, it hasn't completely replaced like being booked on a comedy festival, but with festivals not happening the past couple of years, tours not really happening the past couple of years, that has been the new comedy tour for me. Like five years ago, it was like, like check out this festival, like all these festivals I'm on this fall. And now it's like, check out all these companies that I got <laughs> to go and teach it. Only because, um, because the festivals aren't happening, but I like to bridge those two worlds really. Well, I think that's amazing, actually. And I think you're right. It's like changing your mentality is a big deal because first of all, we need more creativity in the corporate world. That's you're actually transforming more than you think, because, you know, why what, what's to say a corporate, you know, culture doesn't deserve to have a little more mindfulness and creativity. And that might shift the company culture to be more um, progressive or out of the box or open minded to other styles. You know, I think we need more of that. So actually you're, you might be doing a little bit more of God's work, no, <laughs> you know, than you, than you think, and you might be bringing a little bit more creativity and who knows, you know, maybe the next improv star is sitting at their desk at the Whole Foods corporate office. Like, I think I'm going to become an improv actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you're, you're totally right. You're totally right. I completely agree. I, it, it, that's kind of, been a little bit of my secret that you know but my, my own not, not like my secret recipe but like my own personal secret was like I think that it's just as impactful you know even though even though the big difference is the people at the Whole Foods corporates you know their, their corporate luncheon they have to be there because their boss paid for it right <laughs> um but so what a fun afternoon <laughs> <laughs> but so like that's like the funny part of it but i i know that there are people it's just like doing comedy like, i'm sure you've done some gigs in like in places that are untraditional and so it's like when you are performing for like a hundred people at some gala you're like okay, 20 people are paying attention. The other 80 are at the free bar, but I'm going to perform <laughs> for those 20 people. I'm going to give those 20 people the best show. And if you try and perform for all 100, you're going to drown. You're going to not have fun. And you're going to leave feeling like, man, that was, that was a waste of time. Um, so I had that same approach with these workshops where I'm like, okay, there's 100 people in this room. 50 of y'all are really are like, are like sage shy and you have no interest in doing this. But some of you do, and I'm going to like work my ass off to, uh, to like connect with y'all and make sure that you get something good out of this. And so I think you're totally right. It's, it has like a project mayhem, like fight club type feel to it, you know, where it's like, you're, it's like, how did this guy, how did this guy get into this organization to teach his weird comedy stuff at this big corporate event? And I, I love that. I, I love it a lot. I think it's, um, it really speaks to me in a bunch of different ways. And I think I'm really good at it and I really enjoy it. Yeah, I'm sure you are. I think the corporate culture does need to laugh a little bit more. And mindfulness, I think, is a tool that every single person can use, you know, because I think especially now with the cell phone era and the iPad era, people are not in the present. They're looking at a screen. They're, um, you know, there's so much screen time happening. And so being mindful and being in the present and being curious about your world in front of you and and that is just something that we really need as a society right now. So I think that's amazing. Yeah. And I think the society also needs more podcasts like this one from Rosie Tran. So thank you for having me. Okay. This is like turning into a circle <laughs> jerk guys. <laughs> um, I just adore Chris. Okay, guys. So I want to know about some of your mindful techniques. You don't have to give away your workshop. I do want people to check you out and, but this is only a half hour podcast. So how are some of the ways that you're bridging comedy, improv, corporate culture, and mindfulness, you know, maybe give us a little bit, you don't have to give us like a, you know, something you do in your workshop, but just, you know, explaining so that people can get a better understanding who might not understand, like I said, that much about the improv world or the mindfulness world. Yeah, totally. So my all-time favorite topic in this, uh, especially when we're just getting started, is I like to think about conversations like tennis, so like if we're playing, even if you don't know anything about tennis, you can visualize a tennis court and two people on either side of the net, right? 
they hit the ball over the net, then the person goes to where the balls hit and they hit it back over the net, right? Um, so if you think of like the tennis ball as as a as the conversation, I like the I, I like the analogy of people like challenging each other and hitting the ball in challenging spots in the court. But the other person, this, this, this is the key. The other person doesn't guess where the ball is going. They wait to see where the ball is going and then they go to it. This is how good conversations work. You know, it's like if while you're asking me this question, Rosie, if I'm thinking about what am I going to plug at the end of the podcast and I'm not present and, and, and listening to what you're saying, but if I like keep my mind clear and if I practice just being right here in this moment, not looking at my phone, not wondering you know, anything else besides being curious about what you're saying, then it gives me a really great chance to go wherever your question was and answer it in a way that shows I'm present. And then hopefully I'm adding enough information for you to respond back to me and do the same thing. So we're like, we're so like I'm hitting the ball back over the net with my response. You're going to where I hit the ball and sending it back over. And so it's like a great, ideally our conversation is like a, a volley where we are ch uh, challenging each other uh, keeping things in bounds, whatever in bounds is for us, and it's playful. And you know, of course, you charge. You know, for those of you who know tennis, of course, every now and then you might charge the net. You know, and like, <laughs> um, but like, but but that's just like after you earn it. You know, that 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 that's like after you establish a rhythm between the two people. And for those of you listening to this, if if it sounds like I'm describing just like a good conversation, and you're, and, 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 and you're thinking like, okay, what's the big deal? That's, that sounds like a good conversation. It's like, you're right, but you're probably thinking of this with your best friend or with your partner or someone you love a whole lot. Think about it with people who you don't know. Think about it with someone who you don't have a good rapport with or a history with and do this with them. That, that's when it opens up. Like, don't think about the people you already have great communication with. Um, that's like my favorite that's my favorite like intro level, like mindfulness and conversation and creativity tidbit. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. And what you're talking about is because people are having conversations with friends and family, they're already being present because they have that comfort level. And something that I can totally relate to is when I have a podcast guest that's too prepared for the podcast and they have their talking points. And then I ask them a question that's not on their talking points. And they're like, uh, right, because they're so attached to that prepared information, that script. And so they're not being in the moment. They're not being mindful. They're not being present because all they can think about is like their 10 talking points or their five talking points. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's awkward when you try and shoehorn that into a conversation. I mean, this is true no matter what the context is. If it's a job interview, a first yeah. date, a sales call, a presentation, if you're trying to shoehorn your stuff pitch in there yeah. and not being in the moment, <laughs> I think that it's it's not authentic. It's, you know, you are not in the moment. It's like all the bad things start to swim around where if you come into it being really pure, really like it's just me and you right now in this moment. I know the context of why we're here, but I don't know the questions you're going to ask me. I'm, I'm giving you all of me and I'm excited and I'm happy to be here. I think all those things equal, probably going to have a good conversation, probably going to learn something. And um, one last thing I want to say about that too is my favorite example I always give people when they first are learning improv stuff is you can't assume anything besides the, the truth of what was just said. And even then there might be some hidden things in there. Like, like um, you know, to go back to the idea of like, when you say your guests maybe are thinking, not all your guests, some of your guests are thinking <laughs> about what they're going to say and they're not responding to what you just asked. It's like, yeah. in an improv scene, you know, if I, if, if I like pull out an x-ray and if I'm like, oh, Rosie, you know, um, judging by these x-rays, you know, you have you have like 24 hours left to live. Like this is, this is like, you're in a bad situation. I'm not saying anything besides that that is true. I'm not assigning any emotions to it. I'm not telling you how to feel. All I'm saying is that like, I'm your doctor and that's a fact. You can respond to that however you want. You could respond and be like 24, like, oh shit, I thought I had 12. This is great news. And then I'm like, oh, the context now is actually you, like this is, like, if this is great news, then I can assume comedically that other bad news you'll make into being good news, right? Yeah, I want to, oh, sorry. No, I'm just saying like, like, like that's that, and that's, and that type of mentality, I think will get you far because you're always being curious. You're not assuming anything. You're waiting to establish the realities before you 
before you move forward. I think that's how a good improv scene works. That's how great conversations and great partnerships and just great creative arrangements work as well. Yeah, I think there's an aspect to improv that most definitely is active listening. But before we go on, I actually just realized that some of the listeners might not be improv people. So I just wanted to clarify that one of the biggest rules of improv is called yes and. And that's where you accept the other person's reality and build on it. Is that correct, Chris? Yeah, exactly. So the yes is acknowledging what was just said and the and is building on top of it. So yes, for I just example, to make yeah. sure they understood. Yeah. 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 So like if Rosie were to say to me, you know, I, I love your cowboy hat, Chris. Maybe I would say yes. And I spent my whole last paycheck on it. The yes is me acknowledging that I am wearing a cowboy hat because Rosie said it. And the and is me adding more to it so that she can add more to that. That's how and we just, you know, pop it back and forth. I think you also learn a lot of about people's assumptions and their belief systems doing improv because there's nothing worse than being in a scene with someone who's like a little bit of a selfish improv person and you're like you're wearing a cowboy hat and they're like no I'm not you're like okay that's the, right and you have to keep yes standing even when though the person's kind of like getting into their no ending right I don't know if you've ever had a bad scene like that where someone is just like you give them something that they don't know how to work with and it just, yeah, it can go south. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a, it, it, it's a, it's a fear-based choice. It's the person yeah. who is afraid of the unknown. They're on, they're afraid of like, like maybe they're thinking, I don't know where they're going with that. I don't know anything about cowboy hats, and so they're panicking, and so they're making a decision that negates that to protect themselves. And that shit happens in real life Ugh. all the time. It goes back to me saying about curiosity, like. Be curious, be open-minded, and and you will get far um, in improv, but also you know in other aspects of life. So um, and yeah, I think if if you do improv, you have certainly encountered a situation like you just said, Rosie, um, hundreds of times because it's 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 a scary, intimidating art form, and it is, yeah. And I think people can be um, people can freak out and make decisions like that. That's which is why it's cool when you can make it unscary, uh, make the art from not scary and make it more playful and open-minded. That's, that, I think that's when you got the secret sauce. Yeah, I love it. I've been in a couple of scenes where the person like totally did not yes and me and I'm like, uh, and then I get, it's like I said, it's all about your choices, right? And then I kind of get shut down too, where I'm like, uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it, it's like, um, it's like if there's people who are discussing like a first date or, or, or maybe it's like, you know, you're just discussing like what, what the next thing to do is if person A, you know, if I'm like, Rosie, we got to go, we got to go to the river after this and get a daiquiri. And if you're like, no, I don't really want to, but you don't offer anything else. Yeah. <laughs> then like that, 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 then that puts me in the spot and I'm like, okay, well then what if we go and get beignets and then get, and then, you know, get on, um, go watch some music. And if you were like, no, it's like, while yes, it is within your right to like not want to like maybe you actually you're busy or you don't want to go and do those things, whatever. <laughs> but when you're not adding more things to it, it makes the conversation much more difficult. Yes. And I think that's an awesome way to live life as well. And I think it also creates more of an open mind, which is what this podcast is all about, is teaching different ways of thinking and different, you know, um, because I grew up in a very, I love my parents, but I grew up in a very um, I want to say socially conservative environment where people were taught like don't question and I think questioning is so important and so interesting and I learned so many things over the years that's why I started this podcast because I wanted to bring different points of view and I think also understanding different points of view and understanding that yes and mentality it doesn't just help you in your life in the ways you're talking about it I mean you are talking about how amazing it is but it can also help you with empathy you can learn to yes and it allows you to understand other cultures and I mean it's not just comedy right it's when you say yes and you're opening your mind and your heart to different points of view to different cultures because like you said someone might take something that you're putting out and you put it's a neutral thing and take it as a negative or a positive or whatever so it's teaching you different belief systems it's teaching you different points of view by accepting everything that the universe throws at you in that imaginary world of improv but then you can take it into your real life yeah, you absolutely nailed it. I mean, that that is the beauty of this art form, everything that you just said, Rosie. Like, I love the way you put that. It's and we're so lucky that 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 it also it also gives you um, space for comedy. It's like it's like yeah. to me, it's insane that this technique 
helps you be a better person. And when it's done really well, it can be really, really funny and really, really special. And I just think that that is so cool. And that's, that's, and that is a big reason why I have just uh, devoted my pretty much my entire adult life to, to this art form and practicing it and teaching it and just bringing it to as many places as possible. I absolutely love it. Yeah. It also gets your people really excited because it's such a positive space, right? It's, you're not saying no, and you're saying yes. And, and so, I mean, I'll just give an example. Chris and I recently got together and we were talking about crypto, which you guys, the listeners and watchers know is a huge passion of mine. And Chris totally yes, he had me. He was so open and just open to everything I had to say and, and wasn't taking, you know, I'm sh- I, I implored him to do his own research, but I, I felt like we were on like a manic spiral, like talking for two hours <laughs> because you were so open to what I had to say and, and vice versa. And, you know, you were telling me about NFTs and in your NFT investments and collections and passion, which I didn't know that you were into. And so when you're open to that mentality and have and open to hearing what other people have to say, you bring out a passion and you don't even have to have anything in common. Like Chris, we weren't really like good friends before that, but I felt like we really connected. And like you said, had an authentic conversation and it's, I have only known you for like a year. Yeah, I 100% agree. She's absolutely right. I mean, that we could have sat there eating that sushi for another three hours until they closed the restaurant and kicked us out. We were just like in the zone. We were like <laughs> in this flow, which is like, again, like, like that's how great conversations go. And that's how, that's how good comedy shows go. And that's how being a mindful human in this world goes. It's like, you're, you know, you are so present. You are so locked in. You are you are respecting the other person's um, offering to the conversation that you're building off of it. And it's just, uh, it's, it's just so much fun. It's so much fun. Just like this podcast and this podcast has gone by so quickly. I can't believe we're already at our half hour mark. Um, Chris, so how can people take your workshop, learn about your workshop? If someone is listening from a corporate environment, hire you. If someone is like interested in improv now and mindfulness, um, you know, take one of your classes and find out more about you. Yeah, so the best thing you can do is send me an email, go, G-O, go at hellyescreatives.com and just tell me a little bit about you or tell me, or, you know, we, we can book a 15 minute call. Um, I've been really big on uh, just getting on a call with people just to learn more about what you're hoping to get out of it and what, um, and if I can help you. And if I can't, then direct you to someone who can. Um, so oh, so what does me. that mean? <laughs> Well, I mean, like, 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 like some people, some people come to it and they're like, okay, I want to learn improv, but I'm scared of doing it in the context of comedy, or I don't want to do it with a group. Or some people are like, I specifically want to do this with you, with me. You know, they're like, I want to do improv with you. I don't want to do improv with other people who don't know how to do it. So what is it like to work with you one-on-one? Um, and some people have, you know, maybe your company is really, I mean, we were, we kept using Whole Foods as an example earlier um, as like a giant company, but some people are like, well, my company is a startup and we have six employees. Does this even work for that? Yeah. And so um, that's why I say like, you know what, let's send me an email and let's get in the call and let's like just explore it. Let me, let me learn more about what you want to get out of it and let me see if I can help you. So, um, and the, the social I like to push is Instagram. Um, it's my name, Chris True on Instagram. That's just an easy way to stay in touch. You can also send me a DM there. That's more comfy for you. Yeah, that's awesome. And Chris is also an amazing and hilarious comedian. You're on America's Got Talent. Um, are you like a dry humping champion or something? Wrestler, pro wrestler? <laughs> <laughs> You're close. You're close. <laughs> I, so Air sex? I, Yes, I, I, I run a touring comedy show called the Air Sex Championships and I was on America's Got Talent for uh, for a little bit, um, facilitating the Air Sex Championship. I have to dabble in pro wrestling, you know. So you don't have to go as far as Chris to get interested in improv. I know some people are like, I'm not ready for a career in comedy. Like, that's not what we're saying. Um, you can still contact him just to maybe learn how to like communicate better or do like a, you know, it doesn't have to be this crazy thing. So follow Chris, check out his um Instagram, check out, uh, send him an email and, and check him out. And as always, uh, we are out of the box podcast.com guys. I'm on Twitter at funny Rosie. And don't forget to sign up on rock and rockfin.com slash Rosie Tran. I have my other podcast, um, hello crypto kitty on there where I do all the crypto news and talk about all things crypto guys. This has been out of the box podcast with Rosie Tran. See you next time.